name it, that they're watching and listening to you and that they're selling the data and that it has a mischief function. So it, it'll spy on your kids in the house uh, and listen to what they're saying and what they're doing. And so that gets you into the mode of you have a robot hooked into a corporation that's totally evil watching your kids. I mean, if you had a bodyguard that was in your house, you'd want to trust them or like them. But still, it, it's weird. OK, just as a privacy issue. Uh, this is a, a robot in your house, and they're basically giving them away now because they're getting data on you. And I told you this in 2006 because they started doing it then. We wrote articles, and get, I still tune in to local AM or local FM randomly. And half the time, if I listen 10 minutes, they're attacking me because it's people are paid to do this. And they go, he's the crazy one saying our appliances are watching us. I had my cousin that I've known since I was one years old over for Thanksgiving. He's a nice guy, or it was after Thanksgiving, it was an early Christmas party. And he made a joke to me and, you know, said, yeah, my brother thinks, you know, the Alexa's listening, you know, like you do. And it was kind of like, he wanted me to like argue with him. I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. It's just like, it's like, I'm not good for being right and being first to warn you. I'm bad. As everything I say comes true because it was already happening it didn't come true it, it was true I, I, i'm worse you see i'm worse and see that's why they got to demonize me and attack me so people go i don't want to be that guy i don't want to be it, the message is we're going to call you a white supremacist if you say you don't want to be spied on in your house by a robot and if you sell a book about little bunny rabbits and 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 trump being sweet we're going to say it's a white supremacist they actually said that today so I'm just saying, this is the magnitude of the enemy. This is the magnitude. And the good thing is, so what? To not be these people's slaves, they throw coffee on me or yell at me. 95% of the time, somebody buys my dinner or pats me on the back, and, 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 the, and they have such a soul in their eyes. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, old, young. Our listeners have always such incredible souls and are such beautiful people even if they're crippled or they're old or they look like a supermodel, they just have electricity in their eyes. And then I see the servants of evil and they're so hateful. And they hate me so much. And they're just pathetic. And they want to destroy everything. And our forebears had to fight and die to have a little bit of freedom. All I got to do is just stand against them and let them demonize and attack and move forward. But see, they're, they're not targeting me. They're targeting you. They know that I'm going on to the end, whatever the cost is, but they want the message to you that will get you if you stick your little head up. I'm sorry to Sam in Mexico, but I'm going to go to you quick here. So thanks for holding. Go ahead, Sam. You're on the air. I'm praying for you, Alex, and for President Trump in the info war. Well, thank you. I need it, brother. What's on your mind? Uh, what we're up against is the fourth and terrible beast that the Bible talks about in Daniel and other places. Uh, this is the global government that you've been talking about for a long, long time, and uh, now it's finally reared its ugly head, and uh, that's the point. It's, it, it's coming to pass, just like the Bible said. I'm going to come back to you if you want to hold. This is important, because I know I pontificated. We've got Zach coming up. He's a very important guest that I will get to everybody and Millie Weaver, I promise. If everybody gets a free T-shirt or a bottle of X2 or just you know, just tell us what you want, because I appreciate you holding for an hour, and I've got to break myself with this bad habit. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Free shipping ends this weekend, by the way, store-wide, InfoWarsStore.com. All right, the gentleman we have on is anonymous, but he's not anonymous to us. We know his full name. We know who he is. We've confirmed it, and he's been on national news before as a individual with the U.S. military in some of the most secretive areas of counterterrorism. And uh, we'll just leave it at that. Of course, he's formerly out of Florida. He has left and gone to Morocco, uh, where he believes he can give us more information. And again, he gave us devastating info that they didn't even touch in the media on Vegas and exactly, you know, the intel we should look at on what really happened there. And now they admit they're lying about what happened. Um, that's why that just went away. They stopped using that against the guns real quick. And, and, and a lot of other information. He's been brought in by the FBI, uh, visited once, brought in by the FBI, the second time, brought into the Army. Uh, and I, he's not giving us anything classified here. As a citizen, he's pointing out things that are hiding in plain view that people not trained for it won't see. Uh, and so uh, we, we, we've been wanting to get him on. He hasn't been ready to. Obviously, his lawyers, I guess, have given him the green light. Uh, so we're going to 
break down some very, very important things here on air. And it's why the globalists hate live, unfiltered broadcasts like this, because other people don't do this. And I don't say that they go, oh, look, we're big and bad. I'm just telling you, folks, that somebody can anonymously put something, you know, out there on the Internet. It's like it's manna, manna from, you know, Jesus. And sometimes it's disinformation. Zach is who he says he is and has been in very, very important areas of this this whole thing uh, to be able to give us the information he gives us and is doing this at a risk to himself uh, because there's kind of mafia rules to this, at least still in the West, that if you're a real journalist and keep your nose clean, they, they, they still don't kill you. But if you've worked in the system, then they think they own you and they kill you. Now, there's a lot of good people in our government. And uh, there's an internal civil war going on for the heart and soul of the country. And it's spilt out of the open now. Okay. So, Zach, we appreciate your courage. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, last time you were on, you were in Morocco. Are you still in Morocco? Uh, as of yesterday, first and foremost, Alex, it's a pleasure to be back on with you. I had to come on and connect some dots. As of yesterday, I'm flown out of Casablanca. I'm actively right now east of Orlando en route to Cape Canaveral to bring up my first point, which is part of four that are critical. Uh, information that we will discuss here. Okay, well, uh, go ahead. Your phone's breaking up a little bit, but go ahead. Okay, can you hear me loud and clear now? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Okay, first first, and most importantly, um, I had to get in touch with Nico about the North Korea information because what's going on in Cape, Cape Canaveral this weekend, It's and I hope your researchers could kind of in real time pick this stuff up with me because it's out there right now. Um, this is Area 59. SpaceX is having a launch this weekend, whether it was supposed to happen yesterday, but because of weather, it's going to happen this weekend. It's the SpaceX Falcon 9 with the secret payload Zuma, and that's going to go into orbit, and that is done by SpaceX, but the payload is in conjunction with the U.S. Air Force. That's a DOD-fulfilled contract. Now, now you're not saying anything space. secret yet, but I want you to be careful here, okay? No, 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 no. This is this is this is this is public. It's just people aren't connecting the dots or getting the breadcrumbs yet. Um, I mean, you could Google that and find that. This but obviously, happen. North Korea, North North Korea knows. And notice they're suddenly calling uh, for the first time in decades uh, and having marches now calling for peace. Isn't that funny? Well, okay, so okay, I got I got four major points here, and I want to I, I got to get I got to get to them all because they're all interconnected. Go through it. The SpaceX, the SpaceX launch, the Falcon Nine with the Zuma, that's the U M A payload. That's U S Air Force. That's going to be done at what they're calling Area Fifty Nine. That's not conspiratorial. That's official. That's outside of um, Cape Canaveral there, and that's Elon Musk fulfilling a DOD contract, which he's done plenty of all of a sudden, which ties into the spectrum. Bug, you were alluding to it a couple minutes ago as I was listening. That is the back doors into the microprocessors of everything. Okay, here's the deal: the Silicon Valley sultans have fall have fell in line because they saw what happened to Schmidt, and they're not untouchable. Elon Musk has picked his side; he's in with the DoD. But we have collected a lot of information. Uh, I shouldn't say we have collected a lot of information. There's a lot of information being collected. PDFs. It's been mirrored. It's been copied. Class action lawsuits have been filed because of this spectrum bug in California, Oregon, and most importantly, and weirdly, Indiana. Why Indiana? Well, I could tell you why Indiana. There's some troubling emails between Mike Pence, Stephen Bannon, and we could get into Miles Quack and how that all works out. And I got a couple more points here. I'm sorry if I'm jumping, but this, this stuff's pretty critical. No, absolutely. Right now. Continue. Happened. Okay. So the spectrum bug. Um, could be read as spying on, you know, everyday Americans and make no mistake whether you're a public official at the highest levels of power, if you're a, if you're a congressman, a senator, if you happen to be a secretary of state, if you happen to be whatever you are, make no mistake, you use those same devices. So if you think you could bleach them, if you think you could have a house fire and play victim and get rid of them, you are highly mistaken because the Silicon Valley Sultans put the spectrum bug out there, it's classified, nobody's going to know who dropped it, but the information's out there. And now we have the information, now we have the PDF, which will be released, Assange will be released. Um, Bannon made a big, big, big mistake. Um, here's the problem with Bannon. Bannon tried to align with Miles Quack. Miles Quack, uh, people probably
we don't know who he is, but the Chinese billionaire who should be in China. He is the he is the rook. He is the main piece when it comes to this North Korea strike. This Zuma halo that's going to be fulfilled by SpaceX, which launches those going to get into orbit, is going to do something for DND that for DOD that I can't get into that will make the North Korea attack plausible and not as catastrophic as people are worried about. Also, it's going to give us the green light with China. We're going to give them Miles Clock, and we are going to get the green light to take out North Korea, as me and you talked about many months ago. Bannon, in some weird, I, 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 don't, I don't know what happened. Um, I think I do know what happened because I've seen some emails and some PDFs. Um, they were attempting to pull off the 25th against 45. Obviously, that didn't happen, and they thought they were dealing with an idiot. Um, this, this is serious. This is happening right now. This is happening right now. Well, I know. Roger and Stone Roger Stone is much more than he seems, obviously, and he's been down at Mar-a-Lago. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, and he six months ago, eight months ago, I was like, shut up about quack, 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 quack. And then the Chinese president came, and they said, give us quack. And then we'll back you on the North Korea. And Stone knew that back before it was even on the news. And he just has been obsessed with it. Uh, and then uh, he, obviously he brings it up every time he talks to the president. And uh, the president's so busy, he's like literally like, what, that guy hadn't been yet? I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Well, the, the, the issue the issue is, is they were they, they were double dealing Bannon, Tillerson. Tillerson's the next. What they don't understand is. Well, that's what, okay, okay I'll just so say it. Stone told me that Bannon was going to be out six months ago because of intelligence operations getting caught up by the Chinese. And, and, then he, and, and, then, and then it was basically forbade from talking about it, but now it's basically out. And I was like, absolutely, I don't want to come out and say Bannon's in bed with the Chinese. Are you kidding? Uh, but that's the word, uh, and, uh, and I just, it sounded crazy to me, and now look at this. So, so then, you know, you have Trump coming out, and I can't get into certain things that are going on, but, yeah, there are operations protecting the... Yeah, just because that quack guy is running around shooting his mouth off about China, that's the biggest quark. Trojan horse I've ever quark. seen. You can what take one look at that guy. Quark. Sorry. What what could be said about Steve Bannon that hasn't already been said about Carl Rove, and what could be said about Carl Rove that hasn't already been said about Bandar Bush? Yuck. Uh, the Silicon Valley Sultans had to fall in line, and Elon Musk did, um, because they saw what happened to the actual Sultans in Saudi Arabia. And as we spoke about months ago, the viewers could pick it up. I told everybody, first year salvage, second year savage. And what we're seeing right now is nothing short of remarkable. And I'm just telling you right now, Kwok will be extradited, and the signs will be in the United States within about a week and that's going to be a switch that's going to happen and you know um here's the last thing so i left casablanca yesterday in morocco i had to go there for certain things but elon musk is a patriot assange is a patriot um there's elon musk has a lot of interest in the sahara and making huge solar farms as he does in australia and i can tell you right now that musk is a fan of yours um, I could tell you the same way. Maybe you didn't know who I was back then, but Farrakhan was a fan of yours. The problem is the image, and they think, you know, all the click. No, I'll just say it now. It wasn't off the record, but I just, ugh, I can't even get into it. I mean, I, I, that's I incredible. Uh, hold on, hold on. Stay right there. We'll be right back on the other side with our real Q enough. Stay with us. This hidden a game, it's not a drill, it's not make-believe, we're not LARPing here. This is not live-action role-playing. This isn't fantasy land, this is the real world, and Zach is a real high-level intelligence source whose information has just continued to turn out to be stunningly good. And that's why the FBI has come and questioned him once and taken him to the military base the other time and held him and then released him. And uh, I think it's important that people understand that people like Assange and People like uh, Zach put themselves at great risk in, in, in just defense of basic human liberty. Meanwhile, Republicans asked DOJ for criminal probe of ex-British spy Steele, who penned Trump dossier that's now admitted to be fake by Steele. And Grassley's also calling uh, basically for, well, there's a new criminal investigation of Hillary. It's all happening. And Eric Schmidt had to leave. Let's get into other tidbits you haven't hit on and uh, why Schmidt had to go and the big shakeup, uh, because they're still censoring but the word is they've been told uh, by the head of the FCC publicly and privately that they better stop or they're going to break up Google, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, so uh, a truly anonymous intelligence source. Uh, Zach, please continue. Now, now back in the U.S. Go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, so it's the Spectre bug. The, like I said, we're, we call them Silicon Valley Sultans. They, they they figured it out. You know, Musk kind of leaped the way there, but uh, we're not messing around here. And um, so, so let me just get into this one because I missed this point. I should have probably started with this. Huma Abedin. I don't know if you like if you remember like our call a couple weeks ago, but we we made the HRC Huma. Huma Obama connection there. Make no mistake, Huma's going to be indicted. Huma's going to be prosecuted. Sessions is doing some. First of all, Sessions is compromised. Sessions is very compromised. Tillerson is very compromised. And when the Spectrum bug comes out, and the PDFs come out. It's not going to come from an individual person, but that would just be published, and then you know, will be able to report them. So that is what it is. Uh, but with that being said, he understands the writings on the wall there, and they got 19 new prosecutors looking into all the field indictments and whom has done. But the problem is the stuff, you know, whom whom is the Awan brother connection? And with the Awan brother connection, the the damning emails, the specter bug. They, sure, I don't want to interrupt you, but but uh, uh, what about this fire in their bedroom? Uh, like basically okay. a fire okay. bombing in, in. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, so that's double barbed, and people will know what that means. Um, they're not untouchable, and a lot of people aren't happy with them. So something happened there. Of course, I know nothing about that, um, but something did happen there, and it was an attempt to burn or get rid or destroy certain evidence, hardware, and even hard files that they had and play some sort of weird game. But make no mistake, they had internal security that was like, like very tight there, but um, they were attacked. They were attacked, and they were just let them know on Seth Rich's birthday, on Seth Rich's birthday, that make no mistake, we're coming at you, and you're coming at you hard. And um, when it comes to Obama, and I'm sorry if I'm jumping, but when it comes to Obama, because this is all connected, the HRC fire, she's done, whom is done. She, she, Huma, Huma will be the end of HRC. That was, that was a big problem for her, but we got the emails through Spectrum. It's all done. Um, but the Obama Foundation, this guy's all around the world doing this and this, and this and that. Um, you know, the Obama Foundation's got a real problem. Barack Obama's got a real problem on his hand. He promised to close uh, Gitmo. Um, it's kind of fitting and kind of uh, poetic that he didn't close Gitmo. That was one of his promises that he didn't do. And funny enough, depending on how you look at it, some of his closest allies are end up being there, hated or not. Amazing. Uh, other big, other, other big points you'd like to make, or just talking to your colleagues, just the general sense of where this battle to restore the republic is right now. Yeah. Okay. So this is the second year we're getting into 2018 with Trump. Trump puts out the tweet, and Trump, you know, they they, they criticize him for Twitter, and they criticize him for having some, I guess you could call them deep state or left behind actors or whatever. But well, they they that. criticize whatever's over the target. Well, Trump, Trump, Trump tweets, and this is out there. You know what makes a good movie? Good actors. He played Bannon. He played Tillerson. He's playing Haley. He's letting them. He's he, he's working them for what they were. It's not going to be that bad, but your political careers are over, and they're done. Bannon is a special case because he because he's especially crazy. Like he's actually out of his mind. And when you see the PDFs, the emails of people he's talking about, and you'd be surprised. You would be surprised who he's talking to. We know he's talking to Miles Quack, but Miles Quack, we have to understand, he wasn't even on the radar for a little bit, but Vice Media, Shane, okay, so Vice Media puts out a piece on this uh, extradited Chinese billionaire, it's this puff piece of how he's this great guy in China, so terrible, and blah, 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 and it's, and it's Shane Smith's uh, uh, Vice doing this. It's Shane Smith that has to sit down with Barack Obama and talking about his foundation. Sure, it's the key operative. Oh, it's, it, 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 it's 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 intense, and uh, you know, I don't know if Gavin would talk about it, but just look. Is at he? A, I mean, obviously, he comes off to me as a straight up Chinese uh, communist agent. I don't even think he's a double dealer, like they're trying to sell on the media. Well, well, you know, I even admire individuals like Anthony Bourdain. Like, I like the show; it's an entertaining show. But when you talk about Hemlock, and if you watch into some of the other episodes where he opens the season at Shanghai and says, "I think the new language of the world will be Mandarin." And it's like, what are you talking about? And where does he work now? It's like he worked at CNN. And um, I think... Sure, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sellout to China. The globalists bet everything on China. It's not going to be the Chinese century. Okay. It's going to be the new American century. It will. And, okay, so this is another one, and this is a big one. 
And this is what's going to come out next week, so let's not lose sight of Ambassador Jack F. Matlock, Jr. Jack F. Matlock, Jr. was an ambassador to Russia back in the, back in the seventies when we were having this issue with the with the falling USSR into becoming Russia, and he speaks prophetically about how they will do what they are doing now. And Trump has spoke about Matlock and meetings in some places and stuff like this, but um, let us not like lose sight that the U.S. like the transition between the USSR into what Russia is today is not like that long of a historical, you know, leap. So there's stay behind communists that are not so happy that the Soviet Union became Russia. And if we could understand that, a lot of this stuff starts to make sense. The problem is that we have a real president in, and they thought they were going to pull off the 25th on 45, but the only thing that resembles 25 is 25,000 in the Dow Jones. So they are all duped. And they are done. That's right. Twenty five thousand, uh, and the in the stock market trumps uh, the old uh, the old twenty uh, fifth amendment. Absolutely. Okay, and here's another little tidbit. And I have to pick. I'm sorry if I'm jumping. There's just a lot going on, and it's hard to get on sometimes. But um, so just to let you, so we're and Trump also uses the word pockets. In parentheses, pockets is very important because it means we're cutting off the funding of Outlaw Weed and everything else. When they when, notice the timetable, notice that um, Schmidt steps down, all the stepping down, when the executive order happens, when Sessions you know puts forward these new prosecutors, and all of a sudden Bannon loses his mind. This isn't a coincidence. The executive order has a lot to do with Bannon because with the spectrum, with the specter bug, um, some of the emails are pretty damning. They were gonna, they were they were going to claim he was crazy in the second year. They were going to push pump. They were going to push Pence. They were going to talk. Let's talk thought about the Twenty Fifth Amendment plan that, that, with their moles that blew up in their face, according to all the evidence that's mounting. With you straight ahead, we're bringing Millie Weaver in to finish up, and then she's got her big report. Stay with us. We'll be back. Spread the live links, folks, and local radio stations. All right, we've got loaded phone lines. Uh, we've got Mike Cernovich coming up, uh, riding shotgun with us. Here is Millie Weaver, our great Infowars reporter. And she's been out on the street uh, looking ahead of 2018 and 2020 uh, and Trump's tweet storms about election fraud and voter ID, which have been proven absolutely on target in triplicate. Uh, so that's coming up as well uh, as as Millie rides shotgun with me into the next hour with Mike Cernovich. But going back to Zach, uh, who, again, uh, is a major whistleblower, gives us really great just analysis uh, and he's not giving us anything secret. He's just giving us analysis and, and his, his view. And he's been really accurate so far. And, and, and you see the storm that's here. Let, let me ask you to finish your points. And, and, and then I got a few questions. And Millie has some here. Um, but, but first, what do you make of QAnon and, and that stuff that's going on? Uh, what do you make of the stuff going on at 8chan? Zach? Mm, let me be very careful when I say this. Uh, Q anon is not singular; it's plural. They, it is, or we are, it's pillars holding up a platform that is the Republic of the United States. Okay, uh, uh, very interesting. Other key points you want to get across, people, about what's going on behind the scenes? What's I, I guess I, I guess what I'm trying to say by that is it's not like one individual with one uh, phenomenon or... I understand it's, it's a consortium of people. Uh, it's a few, it's very few, uh, less than you could count on one hand. Yeah. Um, but it's holding up something very important. And um, do you remember like memes like a little bit ago? Yes. About Trump being, first of all, like his one of his most business savvy assets was Vince McMahon of the WWF. Yes, smacking down CNN. Right, smacking down CNN. But what that represents is the WWF, the World Wrestling Federation, which is full spectrum dominance, which is perceived combat. It's not combat. It's scripted. Right. So when you see this wolf crap, when you see this ban and stuff, they left the they, yeah. He said, "Bring this wolf in the White House. Let Bannon show his true colors. Let him lose his mind. Let his blood sugar rise. Let him get a little sloppy. Let's see where you're really at. Go make your deal with Miles. Try to get a couple more million for Breitbart. There's people out there who got the PDF and the information. And I don't know what you're 
thinking. The 25th, 25th Amendment pushed didn't work. Um, so what would you do if you were him, if you were an out-of-shape, out-of-your-mind individual who thought that, that Donald Trump was going to crap his pants, and then you find yourself in a situation where that's not the case, and you're, a, you're an evil, maniacal sociopath who has to line his pockets and who's envious of InfoWars, and I have some interesting emails for you to read about that as well. Well, I know this. My gut told me not to meet he, with Bannon. He, Trump sees it. Trump sees it. You have to understand. Trump sees it. It's not like, uh, you know, this isn't, this isn't like a closed room with four or five people where it's like, okay, you go do this, this, this. Like the White House is like this huge apparatus where, like, this is not like you have to understand the lay of the land. Like, oh, you know, I know. He, you know, I haven't gotten a call from Trump in, in months, uh, and, and he has to literally sneak away to call people. But uh, it's more genuine than, than than I've seen him in these other phone calls. Other people, he's very genuine. But but Trump really likes the excitement of taking the globalist on, and for them to claim, oh, he didn't really want to win and all this crap. I mean, Trump is like, keep attacking, never stop. We're going through. I'm not going to let you down. We will turn the country around. We will get it done. Yep. And it's like he's reporting to me, and I'm not saying that as a power trip. When he came to my audience, and that was the kickoff, and we all knew it was going to happen there. When he came well, to my audience, he was saying, I will not let you down. He was literally being honorable and saying, I'm ready for the mission. He's a, he's a man of his well, word, and that counts for a lot in the political sphere because we've never seen that before. Most of the times we get politici politicians, puppets, whatever, they lie to us, tell us what we want to hear, and then they go well, in there. it was and the and opposite of a them. narcissistic power trip about him. He's just making it about him as a logo to beat them trying to kill his image as a figurehead. That's why they hate it because he's rebuilding it every day as they try to destroy it. But I'm just saying when it comes down to it, he's into the thrill of the mission. We're all on exactly. together. That's the thrill for Trump. It's not about narcissism. He makes fun of himself. It's all a big joke when it comes to him. But when it comes to the country, he's for real. That's why they call him mentally ill because he goes, he there really was, cares. I'm, I'm sorry, Zach, go ahead. There was, no, there was no term fake news before the Trump phenomenon. So why not let, let the wolf in the White House? This dude is going to self-implode. I mean, look at him. And you look at Ben and anybody who sat down with him. I mean, I don't mean to like, uh, I don't mean to like, actually, I will. I don't care because what they did to Breitbart, I'm aware of what they did to Breitbart and wait till we get the PDF out. But Bannon is no Breitbart just because he happens to be there now. He's a slob. He's out of his mind. He thought he could be Karl Rove, but um, Donald Trump's not George W. So, and he made that very clear during one of the debates. And you know, Zach, I, mean, I kind of have a question that's been on my mind because I was listening to you earlier and you were talking about North Korea. And we all know yeah. the globalists want to take Trump out. But there's been a lot of stuff that the mainstream media has been pushing with yeah. almost foreshadowing headlines that somehow Trump's going to be boisterous and North Korea is going to attack us. Yeah, could they is there anything? Use the 25th Amendment to get rid of Trump of but, the North Korea. But is there also something, do you know of any information out there in the back channel of the globalists actually plotting to work with North Korea to have North Korea attack us in some way that it can be blown up at Trump's face. What this is is truly, a, and this is a, that's a great question, Millie, and what this is is like, um, it's, it's truly a sad situation because th this is a generational plan that's been going on, and they spoke about the armistice, and anybody who's been in South Korea and the DMZ, like I was stationed over there for a bit. This has been going on for like 50 plus years, right? So it's like, Eventually, something had to occur, and they were they were invoking strategic patience. But when it came to Trump, and he said, "Hey, you know what happened at 9/11? What's happened with our foreign policy? What's going on here?" Eventually, it had to come to an end. And once we realized how big of a pawn they were being used in the global scheme of things, it was important. And I made a call, and I said, "North Korea, Yemen, and Iran are all connected. There will be no kinetic war with Iran because the, the war is going to happen in the streets as we're as, as we're seeing now. North Korea is going to be." It, it, there, there's going to be a strike in North Korea. There's just no way around it, and, it, and it's terrible, but it's going to be limited. It's not like, you know, completely Yeah, but we'll see what the out. Russians and the Chinese do. Do you well, think it's possible but, but, that we could see North Korea strike South Korea? And that get blamed no, on Trump? Here, but, so, I opened, so I opened the call with this, and this is the most important thing, and this is the inside information that people have to, you know, pick up the crumbs or connect the dots. The SpaceX Falcon 9 with the Zuma payload what happens in North Korea? You know, they have all this stuff. They have all this capability. What if, what if they don't have any power? 
what, what, what if we have an, like the most sophisticated EMP over the country where they can't retaliate and we can, and we come in with covert operations, take out the power leaders? Do you think those, what, what human being on the planet wants to be a slave? What if you, they're, they're in fear. So if we could come in, if we could stop their capability, if we could remove their power, show the prosperity and allow a true transition of real leadership to happen there, that's possible. And that's possible only because of the technology that we have nowadays in Silicon Valley falling in line. We're not talking about complete annihilation. We're not talking about uh, you know a nuclear, a nuclear attack like we've seen 60 years ago, 70 years ago. We're talking about sophistication. The lights shut off. People are gone. They wake up and they say, you know what? Life sucks there. It's been sucking for a long time, and guess what? I, I, I would like a better life. And it doesn't have to be kinetic. We have the capability, and with SpaceX and with what we're doing, what we're doing, it does not have to be kinetic. It will be deadly at some level because there are people who are just fully in. But it's, it, it, this is beyond Make no mistake. Turning the power completely off, even though they don't have it in most of the countries, and kill a bunch of people. But they're already living no, no, a living but, hell. But, but, but let me make one thing clear. Let me make one thing clear. This Zuma mission... This is that, you know, it's, it's U.S. Air Force, it's U.S. Air Force in there, but it's SpaceX delivering the capability. It's called Crew Dragon. What did Trump talk about? Fire and fury. Fire and fury like the world has never seen. What is a dragon? I don't think people understand what's going on. This is, this, I mean, we're living in a real life movie that's never been sold. This is unbelievable. It's, it's like, it's, it's, it's not like, yeah, they are brainwashed, but they're not completely gone. There will be a strike. There will be absolute warfare, but something's going to occur where their capability is completely smashed. Three days ago, they did it. I don't even know if it's been reported. Three days ago, they had a test in North Korea that was quote unquote foiled and their own missile crashed on the city of themselves. Okay, so they so they so they hit themselves with the missile because they had a failed missile test. The people, the, 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 they're not going to go along with this. This is all happening. This is 2018. Well, more than that, they've got all the particle beams on the jets. They can shoot those missiles I, down. I got one more point. Well, one more point. We'll come back and we're going to get to her big report. Thank you. This is powerful. We're back live. Billy Weaver riding the shotgun with me into the next hour part way with Mike Cernovich, the journalist, investigative reporter. And we've got uh, Zach here with us. Just such grave information we're talking about. And everything Zach's ever talked about here with us is either public domain or I've, it gets verified. And, it, and it's a perspective into some of the things that are going on. I think we're going a little bit over the edge here with him getting into payloads on, on uh, missiles and on, on rockets. I, I'll tell you, there's all sorts of stuff like that up there. Just what they've accidentally leaked. You know, they had that stuff up there in the late 70s. Star Wars didn't begin until they branded it that in the 80s. But before it was just a space command, which they just announced officially a few years ago. It's been around since uh, they formed NASA. NASA is the public name of Space Command, and that is the real clandestine breakaway government uh, that Trump has been hinting he wants to now open up to the general public and take us light years into the future. But that's a whole other subject and a whole other area. Uh, I, I just know the stuff I was told about family that worked in some of those areas was that the stuff they saw in the 60s is what we have basically now. Uh, and yeah, they're hiding um, yeah. technology, essentially. Supposedly, I've heard that there is this museum of things that will never be because it's like hoarded technology um, and information that essentially has been bought and the patents have been bought and it's essentially technology well, it, it, that would free people. It's known as disruptive technology. And there's kind of yeah. an allegory at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark where the art goes in, there's a whole warehouse and that stuff. And, and that's basically what it is. And the argument for the total surveillance is we've got such high tech weapons and systems. We've got to surveil what everybody's doing to, to keep control. But then they're randomly gene splicing everywhere and doing all this insane but, crap. But you, it's not it, it, it's devilish. It's a race to become God. I told everybody this. And now Elon Musk is blowing the whistle and sounds exact word for word. what I'm telling you, because he didn't get it from me. That's what goes on behind the closed doors. And, gonna, and they pick and choose which technology they think is going to disrupt disrupt the system. Whereas look at how much iPhones have disrupted the system. Disrupts our, our regular anything life. Anything that will help us and call it disruptive and, they, and everything that is disruptive they roll out. It's always exactly. inversion because that's their system. Exactly. We're going to continue, Millie, because you're here because I want to yeah. hear your, your great report, but I'm running on and we've got to get to, back to Zach. Zach, go ahead and finish up, my friend. Yeah, I mean, whether or not you think it's overstretched and makes a mistake, uh, I mean, it's public information. Look at the look at the Air Force and the DOD contracts that have been fulfilled by SpaceX. Nobody else, SpaceX. So we're, we're in bed together, whether we like it or not. And uh, I can tell you firsthand 
that Elon Musk is a patriot. I could tell you for his hand that Assange is a patriot, and I could tell you that any if Hillary Clinton had became president, well, you could just uh, look at Assange and he looks genuine and smart. It's like evil well, people tell, look evil. Let me hint to it. Let me hint to it. Go. I can tell you firsthand that Assange and Musk are on our team. They are aware of you. They are fans of you. But like anybody else, they run in circles where it's like, you know, people want to be popular, this and this, and some things are sensational. And it's the same thing with Farrakhan. He said this. He said that. I said, I think you just got to listen. Listen to what he's really saying. Like, imagine having the, you know, the information and the knowledge of Alex. Like, let me bridge that gap and we could do that. And look what we've done. Look what we've completed. And this week in Cape Canaveral, when this SpaceX uh, launch takes off, Operation Zuma, um, you know, what is this, the most successful president ever? This is 45, okay? On Christmas Day, you have the Secretary of Defense tweeting out an image of, you know, uh, Washington crossing the Delaware. And I was in Morocco on the 25th. I couldn't spend the 25th, in my, you know, in, in America. And I can tell you right now, on the 27th, we had some specific individuals connected to the Obama Foundation, not in specifically, but his security, if you want to call it that, you want to come, and I just want to, I'm going to state this right now, and right, but like, just, just to be clear, and it's like, there's nothing, like, there's nothing problematic about this. Um, Obama Foundation was meant to give a speech in April in Marrakesh and, you know, late April. Sorry, that was canceled. Morocco. I'm sorry about that. But we know about the pay to play. We told the majesty. We told the CEO of Mosaic in Florida. And next time you come to the Rift Mountains, and next time you come to check me, we'll see how it goes. It didn't work too well on the 27th of December, and here we are talking. So I'm doing what I'm doing. And and the money has is being cut off from the from. How about Soros? How how's that creature doing? Jesus Christ, Soros. First of all, Soros is running for his life because they will indict him. Listen, it might just, it might, it might not even be government sanctions. Somebody might just get him, but uh, Soros is, first of all, Quack is in bed with Soros. Quack is talking to Bannon. So right there, we have a huge problem. I, like, I don't know Bannon personally. I've seen some PDFs and some emails, but like, I, I, I thought it was all fishy after what happened to Andrew Breitbart. And I didn't want to say anything about it because, you know, Trump actually did get elected. But I understand what he's doing now. Like, he's letting them, you know, hang themselves. He's seeing what they're doing. And it's only, the, you know, he's going into the second year now. But uh, Soros is a big problem. But I'm telling you right now, the Huma Abedin emails, it was so sloppy. And it was so it was so blatant and with the spec with the specter bug we have it all mirrored they're done but the prosecutors are out there it's only january just wait till february how, how, how does eric prince how does eric prince tie into this we know he you know it, it, it. The Eric Prince is a great guy. Eric is a great guy. Obviously, I know Eric well. Uh, we protect the president. What do you want me to say? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, this had to happen. And what I've said it on the show several times. It's the second American Revolution. Eric Prince is a good guy. The problem with Eric Prince is, again, with some of the Spectrum stuff, and not only that, they have, they have collection data of just, like, massive amounts of phone calls, which is, like, problematic, and emails. It's like you're talking at 11 o'clock at night with somebody. Obviously, during the heyday, when everybody was getting paid during the Halliburton days and the chain days, people were collecting money, but Eric Prince had a change of heart, or at least he seems to be pure. He seems to be at least, you know, have the president, like, you know, um, I don't know, it seems to be protecting him, but he has a problematic past in some certain capacities. But, I mean, it, 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 you know, nobody's perfect. But as of late, as of, shoot, as of two months before the election, you know, he's done great things. But I've been wary of a lot of the PMCs, and I don't work with some of those PMCs. I do my own thing, and I think really getting into that stuff. But uh, Prince is a good guy as far as I'm concerned, nothing too compromising, especially not in the last 12 months. And some of his operators have done great work. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, well, let's, I, well, I, let's, I, let's I, say I, this in closing and powerful information because I asked Millionaire and I'm, and I'm being rude. She's just sitting there, but uh, she doesn't mind. Uh, I mean, we can I'm talk sorry, about this for hours. No, 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 no. We pretty appreciate you. Here, but here's the point. The arrogance of the Clintons and Soros and the globalists is just delusional. And But they've got to know now that there's no way they're getting away now. There's no way they're going to win, even if they killed me, killed Trump, killed Matt Drudge. I mean, they're not going to be able to stop us now. 
Okay, so Assange had it, I had it, Corsi had it. Okay, Corsi, what did Corsi say? You're going to see people fleeing the country. You're going to see suicides. You're going to see this. You're going to see that. Uma Abedin is going to play this weird, you know, we're in such this culture now where it's like, I'm a victim. Look how big of a monster my husband was, which he was, a complete freak and just a tool. But it's like, it doesn't excuse you from what you've been doing and who you know in Pakistan, and not to mention the, the order that's been passed. Hey, Pakistan, how about you're not getting close to a billion dollars this year? How does that sound? It's all it's, it's all happening. There's definitely a big war going on. All right, thank you so much, Zach. And I'd like to talk to you sometime uh, today, if you can, off air or tomorrow, because I've got some questions for you. Um, and again, nothing classified. I just want to <laughs> get your take on a couple things. But you can no, already no, see let's everything talk, anyways. Let's talk. Hey, as of, as, as of, as of uh, after I leave this, when this launch happens on Saturday or Sunday, depending on the weather here, i got to fly into London for two days. I'm going to be back into the States. Uh, next week, but we we need to talk because uh, we're changing the world. Yeah, but, uh, I, I, like to, I just like know speak, about. I, I would love to talk to you. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, here's the deal. I mean, their money's drying up. I've seen it. They had operations against us. That as soon as the as soon as the Saudi Arabia stuff happened, man, it got cut off. And that's why, and, and that's why the stuff they were doing like suddenly went. Wah, 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 wah. But a bunch of their idiots, like Hitler Youth are out there as the Russians are rolling into Berlin in 1945, and, and the Nazis have already fled, and they got 12-year-old kids up front. I mean, all the people at BuzzFeed and Media Matters, they're still at their machine guns, and, and, and 3 million troops are rolling in. I don't think they understand. And we're not just saying that. I mean, 3 million Russian troops, you, they love blaming on Russians, all <laughs> use the allegory, 3 the million Russians. Russian troops are about to face down a half million German kids. Well, I think that they're actually going to allow Hillary Clinton and Huma Abedin to take the fall. The Democratic leadership are going to back away from Hillary Clinton, allow her to take the fall, so that then whoever they run in the midterms, whoever they run during the 2020 presidential election, they can have, um, they can claim to have a disassociation from Hillary Clinton. We've already seen with Joe Biden, who there's been a lot of talk of him running in 2020. He's actually already on his book tour, and he's been criticizing Hillary Clinton. You think, oh, why would he be criticizing? Well, he's not actually really not liking Hillary. He's trying to create a distance between himself and Hillary Clinton because they know that absolutely. they're going to let her take the fall. That's perfectly said. That's absolutely right. Zach, thank you so much. Be safe. All right, he's gone. We're going to come back. We're going to get your special report. Mike Cernovich would love to hear it. He loves calls as well. Uh, he's such a great guy when he